Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! Hey Tony, have you ever wondered how exactly snake venom affects the human body? Well, I happen to have a couple of vipers and cobras lying around. We'll let them bite you and see exactly how the venom kills people. Let's begin! Let's start by saying that venomous snakes are not bloodthirsty killers at all. They never attack humans or large animals for no reason. It happens purely out of self-defense. For example, if someone steps on them or gets too close to their hideout. Most often they bite the feet or the muzzle of those who are particularly curious. Let's start the experiment with the vipers. Release the kraken. I've always wanted to say that. Well, it's done. The place of the bite swells and turns red quickly, and Tony starts feeling an unbearable pain. In general, there are two kinds of snake venom. The first spreads through the blood system, gradually destroying the vital organs and tissues of the body. The second acts on the nervous system, making the lungs stop working and causing death from suffocation in just a few hours. Viper venom belongs to the first type and acts mainly on the blood circulatory system, causing hemorrhages. It severely affects the muscles and some other tissues of the body. Snake venom changes the composition of the blood and kills white blood cells. White blood cells protect the body from pathogenic germs, but they cannot cope with the action of the venom. So when germs start to multiply on the wound, which won't heal and may even get infected with gangrene. Likewise, viper venom affects the entire body as it spreads through the bloodstream. In addition to changing the composition of the blood, it causes severe damage to the tissues of the liver, spleen, and kidneys. The kidneys usually remove the poisonous substances from the blood directly into the urine and then naturally into the toilet. They also try to remove the snake venom, but in this case their tissues partially die off. If viper venom enters the digestive system, there is severe inflammation and hemorrhages, but the venom itself is destroyed by the digestive juices and bile. Now Tony is feeling drowsy and is semi-conscious. He may suffer from nausea, vomiting, and even convulsions. His heart rate increases, but the heart itself becomes weaker, the body becomes cold, and Tony has trouble breathing. Death comes from respiratory failure within 12 hours to 8 days if no antidote is administered. However, not always a viper bite leads to death. Sometimes the body can cope with the poison itself and the person recovers. That's exactly what happened to Tony. The heart starts functioning better, the body warms up, and the swelling goes down. But the damage caused by the poison of the viper was so strong that Tony may feel weak for a few months. And it is even possible that the disease will return and become chronic. That is, weakness and poor heart and lung function may remain forever. But Tony is a strong boy and is rapidly recovering. I think Tony is ready for us to try the second kind of snake venom. By the way, it is abundant in the most famous snake, the cobra. Let's see what we have here. There is no swelling at the bite site, no pain either, but Tony feels tired and faints. Breathing and heartbeat become labored. Such poison can cause death in just a few hours if nothing is done. The fact is that cobra venom affects exclusively on the nervous system, so it does not produce any local effects. The main active agent of cobra venom is a neurotoxin that affects the respiratory center, causing suffocation. However, even such a bite may not be fatal. The body is able to cope on its own if a small amount of venom enters the body. But it is better to get help from specialists and receive competent treatment. You can recover much faster from a cobra bite than from a viper bite. Because if the body has withstood the effects of the poison, it is easily removed by the kidneys without damage to the tissues and blood, whether we're talking about a person or an animal. The main thing is to drink plenty of fluids and go to the toilet. Tony, fresh air is always good, but out in the open you can find dangerous and sometimes poisonous snakes. See, told ya. First of all, Tony, don't panic. You should remain calm so your heart won't beat harder and your blood won't spread the venom faster. If you can, try taking a picture of the snake so that the doctors can give you the right antidote. And of course, call an ambulance. The faster you get help, the bigger your chances of survival. While we wait for the paramedics, sit and keep the area of the bite below the heart. 
tend the wound with antiseptic and put a dry bandage on it, but not too tight, because the bite can swell and the bandage can hurt the skin. Apart from that, you should write the time of the accident and your symptoms. So, even if you pass out before getting help, the doctors will have all the information to save your life. Overall, these are the basic rules to survive a snake bite. But you know, Tony, the best way to protect yourself is being cautious. To avoid getting bit by a snake, you should be careful where you walk and avoid places where you can easily find snakes. Check tall grass with a stick before entering. This might scare the snake away or force it to bite the stick first. Once it had attacked, the snake will go away because you are bigger than it and it is probably scared of you as well. Remember that snakes attack humans not because they are predators, but only to protect themselves. Wait, Tony, don't do that. You're like a baby trying to put everything in your mouth. I know that people in films usually suck the poison from the wound, but research has shown that this method isn't effective. It only allows you to remove 2% of the poison. Moreover, the poison can get to your blood even faster through the buccal cavity. You also shouldn't cut the wound to supposedly let the blood with the poison get out. And last but not least, you shouldn't apply a tourniquet to stop the poison from spreading. It isn't effective and can significantly increase the chance of gangrene. This usually ends with the victim losing its limb. The ambulance is here. Don't worry, dear friends, Tony will be okay. Today, silly Tony decided to do an experiment on his own and see what happens if he swallows a venomous snake. That's it, Tony. You're probably gonna die. Or not. Friends, tell us in the comments what you think will happen to him. We'll figure it out and then see how you did. Let's start. So, there are two types of snake venom. One spreads through the blood system and gradually destroys all vital organs, affecting the blood itself. The second one enters the nervous system through the blood and attacks it. It forces the heart, the lungs, and other organs to stop functioning. Vipers have an abundance of the first type of venom, while the latter is possessed by one of the deadliest snakes, the cobra. Overall, snake venom is a very complex mixture of organic and inorganic compounds, which together with special toxins, lead to the death of the victim. But unlike other types of venom, snake venom affects the muscle tissues immediately after the bite, and from them it enters the blood. So it's possible that if the venom enters through the stomach, it won't have time to get in the blood, because as we know, gastric juice is a powerful acid, which splits everything into smaller particles. But after this process, these particles still enter the blood, supplying all of our organs with essential substances like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. This begs the question, can broken down snake venom kill a person once it's in the bloodstream? Do you want to know, Tony? And here I am deliberately keeping you in suspense so that you have time to think about your behavior. Let's go back to the 17th century. The Italian physician Francesco Redi was convinced that snake venom was dangerous only when it enters the bloodstream via a bite. To prove his point, he publicly drank almost an entire glass of this deadly liquid. And he dropped dead. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing happened to him. So there's still hope, right, Tony? But what if he just got lucky? At the end of the 19th century, biologists began to actively search for a cure for snake bites. They discovered that research animals became immune to the venom if administered gradually starting with very small doses and gradually increasing them. Scientists began experimenting with horses. They gave animals small doses of poison, and antibodies began to form in their blood that neutralized the poison molecules. With each new dose, the antibodies grew in number until the animal no longer reacted to the venom at all. Eventually, this horse blood full of antibodies allowed to save many lives. In 1895, it led to the creation of the world's first anti-snake serum. Although, this serum only works against the venom of the particular species used in the experiment. Unfortunately, a universal antidote for all snake bites has not yet been invented. Let's keep going, friends. I know you love super interesting facts. This may come as a surprise to you, but snake venom is super popular in medicine. These reptiles are even specially bred in order to extract their valuable venom. It is used in the production of painkillers, anti-inflammatory drugs, and other medicines. By the way, 
One gram of snake venom can cost from $500 to $5,000. Yeah, Tony, you could be rich by now. You fool, why do you put everything in your mouth? Well, based on all this, we can conclude that snake venom in small doses is not dangerous at all. On the contrary, it can be useful. Of course, if you drink the venom in its pure form, a small amount may enter the blood through small wounds in your mouth or in the esophagus, if there are any. And even then, it will all depend on how toxic the venom is and how much of it gets into the bloodstream. But that's not our case. And you, Tony, prepare for a few excruciating days of intoxication. Or, to put it simply, severe poisoning. But not just because of the venom. Scientists have already proved that this deadly liquid is easily broken down by gastric juice and disintegrated into simpler, quite harmless substances. But the snake itself would be quite difficult to digest. It has a bony skeleton that will remain in your stomach for a long time, giving you no peace. Plus, there's a chance that before getting into your system, the snake had eaten something, like a mouse, that could have a whole bunch of different harmful bacteria or even fungi, all of which can lead to food poisoning. So my friend, hang in there. You might get a high fever, weakness, vomiting, and even terrible diarrhea. But again, friends, none of this is because of the snake venom in his stomach. It's only because our experimenter isn't very smart and doesn't consult me before doing things. Tony, get ready! In today's video, we are going to travel the whole world to see the most poisonous creatures on our planet. Let's go! The fifth creature on our list is the poison dart frog. It can be found in the forests of Central and South America. If you happen to see such creature in the wild, remember to stay away from it. This little fella carries enough venom to kill 10 adults. In the past, the local tribes used to smear the poison of these creatures on their arrows and spears. The fourth place is reserved for the Taipan, a snake that lives in Australia. In one bite, it can release enough venom to kill 100 people. The venom of this deathly creature is several hundreds more poisonous than the venom of a cobra. If it bites you, you'll probably be dead after 45 minutes. Lucky for you, there's an antidote. Moreover, this snake scares easily and in the face of danger, it tries to run away as fast as possible, or to slither away. In the third place is the Death Stalker, a scary scorpion that can be found in North Africa and the Middle East. By the way, despite what many people think, most scorpions aren't deathly to humans and their poison causes only pain and swelling in the place of the bite. Nevertheless, the Death Stalker carries a deathly cocktail of neurotoxins that can cause incredible pain, fever, and convulsions, putting you into a coma, paralyzing you, and finally killing you. The second place goes to the King Cobra, which can be found in Asia. It is considered the most poisonous snake in the world. It doesn't have the deathliest poison out there, but the quantity is impressive. One bite is enough to kill an adult elephant. Moreover, King Cobras aren't afraid of anything. If they're hungry or feel threatened, they don't hesitate to attack anyone, including people. That's the main reason why this creature is so high on our list. And finally, the winner of the title of most venomous creature on Earth is the box jellyfish. It can be found in the waters of Asia and Australia. Its venom is the most dangerous in the world. The toxins can stop the heart, the nervous system, and the cells of the skin. Moreover, it causes a tremendous amount of pain. So, the victims usually suffer from pain shock and drown or die from heart attack. Data shows that in the last 60 years, box jellyfish have killed more than 6,000 people. Yeah, we better get going, Tony. Our home feels so much safer. So, friends, tell us if you know other dangerous or poisonous creatures that live on Earth. The best comments will be featured in the next video. And kudos to those who leave likes. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.